Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy John, AKA Spears here. In today's video, we're gonna be going over 10 things that you probably don't know that you can do inside of Warzone 2. So the first thing that you probably didn't know is when you guys are actually in the Gulag, they're gonna be the vest spawns. These vests allow you to carry up to three plates. In the Gulag, there are no extra plates, but when you go to the Gulag, obviously all of your loot drops. So if you pick up this vest in the Gulag and they go ahead and win and respawn, you'll spawn back into the game with the three plate option because you get to take the vest out of the Gulag with you. The vest typically spawn in just two spots either up on kind of the plateau or down in kind of the pit of death if you will and having this vest makes regaining a lot easier because you're not going to be at as much of a disadvantage as you were coming out with just two plates now you'll be coming out with the ability to have up to three for the next thing that you didn't know it's going to be how to rearrange your backpack before we get into that you might be thinking to yourself well why would i want to have my backpack in any kind of order because right now the way the game works is any order that you pick things up is how it goes in the bag and with that being said you can obviously stack a lot of different things like lethals, tacticals, kill streak, even field upgrades, things of that nature. And so having things in an order will help you in a pinch. So for an example, if you're in a tight spot and you have the stuns equipped currently and you need to switch to a smoke grenade, instead of having to kind of figure out in your backpack where they are, you can quickly hit down on the D-pad to open up the backpack and then two times to the right on the D-pad and click square. Then you'll be able to quickly switch to your smokes. So this is kind of the benefit of having your backpack in order. Anyway, the easy way to do this and currently the only way to do this, all you have to do is go ahead and drop everything out of your backpack and then pick it up in the order that you want it in for me i like my lethals and tacticals in the first spot then i typically do field upgrades then plates and then ammo obviously the plates and ammo doesn't really matter where they are in your bag but the things that you're going to swap out more frequently you're going to want to go ahead and stack those in the earlier slot moving on to number three it's going to be the hummer ev now this might seem like a weird thing to talk about but i didn't even know this was in the game and i'm only bringing it up because because the vehicle is grossly overpowered. The vehicle has the best acceleration, the best turning, the best hill climbing ability, and it is incredibly freaking fast. This thing is by far my favorite vehicle on the map to run around in, and vehicles are a huge part of the game. With that being said, the, probably my favorite part about this vehicle is that it is an EV, so therefore it doesn't make any noise. You can ride around the map as much as you want, and you don't have to hear kind of the droning noise of the engine of the other vehicle. Vehicles. It makes it a lot more peaceful, in my opinion. Here are some of the spawns on the map. They do spawn in the same locations pretty much every time. I personally plan my entire game around getting one of these vehicles early on, just so that way I have it throughout the game. While we're on the topic of vehicles, this is kind of an extra tip. If you hit the circle button while you're driving, your character will actually hang out of the window and you guys will be able to begin firing at enemies. I use this a lot more than I probably should. Most people are not expecting you to hang out the window and take shots at them, especially if you position the vehicle correctly, where kind of the car is in between you and the enemy player. Obviously, don't go hanging out the window if the enemy is going to be right next to you, but this is something that is helpful and I think a lot more people should be using. Talking about early on in the game and kind of my game plan, the landing spot that I'm about to show you is going to be able to allow you to get your loadout within the first two to three minutes of the game, if not even faster. Faster. Basically, there is a little building slash cafeteria slash mall thing underneath the high rise tower that you guys can go in and it has a ton of cash registers. If you guys loot all the registers and the shelves, you'll come out with around 10 to $15,000. Basically the equivalent of buying three weapons from the buy station. So if you're playing trios, not only you, but each of your teammates will also be able to buy a weapon out of the buy. Or if you're playing solos, it'll give you a good little boost going ahead and getting the loadout weapon and a UAV pretty early on. Another bonus tip, like I said earlier, I do plan my games around getting that Hummer EV just because of how overpowered it is. There is a spawn directly at the bottom of the tower. So I recommend grabbing the vehicle first and then making your way to the registers. Coming in at tip number four is that with the medium and the large backpacks that you find on the ground, they actually give you a slot to go ahead and stow away an extra weapon. If you guys want to go ahead and swap to the weapon that you put in that slot, all you have to do is click down on the D-pad and then click square to equip it. It's really beneficial to have an extra weapon. From what I found in this game so far, having an AR and SMG seems to be the meta, but obviously over range, these ARs are not really working out too well. So possibly stowing a sniper in your backpack could be a good alternative or a good way to kind of cover all distances. But another great use for this is if you're playing duos, trios, or quads, and you have a teammate that went ahead and died and you want to keep moving around the map, you can do them a solid by just picking up their weapon, stowing it in their bag, and then they can go ahead and regain on you at any time. Or if you don't want to carry a sniper or a teammate's weapon, just carrying an extra loadout weapon that you pick up off an enemy 
economy in case any of your teammates need a regain or anything like that. It's very, very beneficial to use this. It is something that a lot of people aren't doing at this exact moment. Coming in at number five, we have the grapple and the regrapple feature. Basically, the zip lines in this game got reworked from Warzone 1. In Warzone 1, I would always tell people stay away from them as much as possible because they will likely get you killed. In this game, they're a lot better. You can turn left, you can turn right, you can hip fire, but more importantly, you can put movement into the mix on the zip line. If you guys are getting shot at on the zip line, you can just unattach by clicking the jump button. It will detach you from the zip line, and then you can go ahead and reattach at any point. You don't have to be on the zip line beforehand. Let's say you're just flying in and you missed the ledge and you want to go ahead and just zip line up. It's no problem. You can attach at any point and it will take you where you want to go. For number six, we are going to be talking about the helicopters. These things are invaluable on the map, specifically if you're doing the early game strategy of just landing near a heli and then when these strongholds become available, flying to them so that way you can go ahead and get the permanent uav you can get your loadout weapons and all that stuff from the stronghold obviously using these things for flying around people seem to love to shoot at them for whatever reason and if you're not a great pilot like myself you're definitely going to be bumping into things when you're trying to take off when you're trying to land and just maneuver around a lot of people think that you have to park right next to the gas stations in order to use the refuel and repair but you don't you can actually land on top of them and the refuel and repair will work not only is it a lot safer for you and your helicopter it just makes the repairing a lot easier tip number seven that you probably didn't know that you could do is going to be on the theme of refuel and repair but it's going to be on the refuel theme if you guys go to the gas stations there are actually gas cans in there and these are things that i pass up all of the time i saw them all day didn't pick a single one up but when i was recording this video i did pick one up and they're actually extremely useful you can use them while moving and while driving at full speeds in any of the gas cars or helicopters this allows you to move around the map a lot further a lot faster and is a lot safer than sitting at the refuel and repair station all you guys have to do is go into your backpack hover over the gas can and click square and it will add the fuel obviously this will not repair your vehicle but if you're trying to keep a super fast paced game get as many kills as possible going to the gas stations is not an option so holding on to a gas can or having a teammate hold on to a gas can and having them kind of as the fuel guy is something that will help you keep the pacing of the game up a little bit more i would like to know since the hummer ev can be repaired and refueled at the gas station it cannot be refueled buy the gas cans if you try to use a gas can they give you this kind of cool message on the screen but i thought it was worth noting coming in at number nine it's going to be the fact that you can fall into water at any height and you will not die it is something that is really really helpful especially if you like hot dropping at high rise or if you use helicopters a lot and they get shot down if you guys are floating and you're getting beamed if you're near water obviously just cut your shoot you'll plummet down into the water you will not die no matter how high up you are this is something that will get you out of a lot of tight situations that you would probably otherwise just get beamed out of and then coming in at number 10 it's gonna be the revive pistol a lot of people don't know that the revive pistol actually acts as a self-res if you do not use it at all if you just leave it completely full you don't use any of the cartridges it will actually act as a self-res so go ahead and divvy this up accordingly to your teammates if somebody has a self-res already and somebody doesn't but somebody's holding on to that res pistol go ahead and drop that field upgrade for them if they pick it up and don't use it then they have a self-res as well this is also worth noting that these do spawn in in solos it was kind of confusing at first i was like what am i going to use this for but it's because if you pick it up you can go ahead and use it as a self-res which is obviously the only way you're going to be able to use it inside of solos but i figured it would come in handy if you guys knew that it does count as a self-res anyway that's going to wrap it up for the 10 things you didn't know you could do in warzone 2 i hope that you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to drop a like if you guys gained any value or learned anything or plan on sharing these tips with anyone please consider subscribing to the channel i have a lot of more tips tricks and guides coming out in the future if you guys are interested in watching me play the game live i do stream over on twitch if you guys want to come hang out the link will be in the description down below anyway as always guys i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.